Hi guys and welcome to our first My Edinburgh Experience videos. We're going to be showing you some of my favourite parts of the city and at the same time looking at some of the language that I use to talk about them. It means you get to enjoy a tour of beautiful Edinburgh at the same time as learn some fantastic English. So let's go to our first stop for today. Can you guess where we're going to be talking about today? Okay, big clue, it's not actually Edinburgh Castle. So this object behind me is called the Witch's Well. It's actually a tribute to the uh, almost 300 women who were executed here on the Castle Esplanade after being found guilty of being a witch. It's actually been 300 years since the repeal of the Witchcraft Act which meant that you could be prosecuted for being a witch or even consulting with a witch. So Scotland's obsession with everything that was satanic actually came from King James VI himself. He became really interested in witches and witchcraft when he went to Denmark to meet his new bride. The Danish court were also really uh, fond of witches and accusing women of being witches. And uh, on the way back from Denmark, when he was bringing back his bride, there was a terrible, terrible storm. King James decided that he'd been the victim of a witch's plot, and he soon began to start to find out who was guilty. Upon his arrival back in Scotland, he set about trying to find out who was responsible for trying to sink his ship. And a lot of this came about thanks to the confession of a woman called Galus Duncan. She'd been accused of witchcraft by her employer, simply because she had started to find that she had healing talents. That was enough to make you suspicious. And when she uh, confessed under torture that she had been a witch and that she had conspired with other witches, many names were added to the list of the people that were believed to be responsible for almost sinking the king's ship. One of the most famous stories from the North Berwick witch trials is that of Agnes Sampson. She was a respected elderly woman in her community and she was accused on 53 counts of conspiring with witchcraft. The story goes that she came to the king and said, I am a witch. And the king said, well, I don't believe you, prove it. So in order to prove it, she went up and whispered in his ear the words that he had told to his new bride on their wedding night when they were alone. Of course, that's a good story, but it's not what actually happened. She was taken by special command to have the hair on her head and all of her body hair shaved off. She was kept without sleep and she had a rope thrown around her neck and then she was thrown around by that rope. And she was also forced to wear something called a witch's bridle. This is a horrible instrument of torture that you have in your mouth and it has prongs on top of your tongue and on the side of your cheeks as well. So every time you try to speak, it's horrifically painful. After all of this torture, and only then did she eventually confess to the 53 counts that were against her. She was executed and burned at the stake on the castle esplanade, which you can see behind me here. People were often accused of being witches because of ulterior motives. It might simply be that somebody was jealous of you or they wanted your property and they held a grudge and this was a good way to go about it. Women who were naturally gifted healers were very often accused of being witches and if you had something like a mole in an inappropriate place or a red birthmark, that could also be considered a mark of the devil. Over a century and a half, almost two and a half thousand people were burned at the stake accused of being witches, the vast majority of them being women. Let's hope that history can try to honour them in memory in the way that they never were in life. Can you guess where we're going to be talking about today? On his arrival back in Scotland, he set about trying to find out who was responsible for trying to sink his ship. And a lot of this came about thanks to the confession of a woman called Galus Duncan.
People were often accused of being witches because of ulterior motives. It might simply be that somebody was jealous of you or they wanted your property and they held a grudge and this was a good way to go about it. I hope you enjoyed our video guys. Please remember to subscribe and leave us a comment with what you think about the story of the witch as well. See you soon.